Welcome to High Art Step-by-Step -step Painting Tutorials with Trina and Sarah. Trina and Sarah. Tonight, we're going to paint a teacup. <laughs> the tea bag. <laughs> Grab your favorite edible or your favorite glass of wine and join us on a journey of not being perfect and giggling. Let's paint. Let's paint. Trina is our instructor because I can't paint. So today we're painting this lovely teacup and tea bag that I drew. And one of the things I like about this one is it's colorful and you can kind of go with your heart and what your soul wants for the colors and make it really your own. Um, you put like different, whatever decorations are calling to you on your teacup. Should we show them my practice one yeah, for an example? Yeah, let's see your practice one because the colors are different and it's still... Oh, it's going to be upside down. Really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's very different. So you don't have to be an artist to paint with us. That's right. Because I'm not. But if you have a paintbrush, you're an artist. Okay. Okay. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do, we're going to start with a pencil. <laughs> I have a pencil and I have an eraser. Uh, and we're going to start by drawing the teacups onto our page. And the first line we're going to make is the back horizon line of the table here and that is located about two-thirds of the way down your page now it's okay if it's not exact and you could use a ruler if you like rulers and being straight but this is art so we're not using a ruler yeah. and basically we just want this line to Oops. not go through the middle of your page because compositionally that is a very boring way of doing things yeah so the next line we're going to do is the forward edge of our table and that if you were to imaginarily is that a word imaginarily i don't think so uh if you imagine. were to imagine this section here in half and then in half again so a quarter of the way up from the bottom of your page we're just going to put another line across there for the front edge of our table like that and these lines are just guides so yeah because once you paint you, you can change see them. you can change everything okay so the next line we're going to do there's a lot of lines at the beginning but then not many at the not, end and not many at the end uh so we're going to just draw a light guideline roughly down the middle of our page from top to bottom like that and you can pause when you need to rewind and pause and catch up but don't pause to be perfect because it's art that's right we're letting go of that letting go of perfection and embracing the chaos of the universe okay so now what we're going to do is the middle of the top third it's going to be the top of the teacup I don't understand that, but just kind of go <laughs> up a little here, kind of uh, like this is the top two thirds of your picture. Yeah, the middle of the top two thirds. Okay. That's the top of the teacup. That's the top of our teacup. So just kind of make a little line there. And really, too, you can make your teacup taller if you want your tea bag closer. <laughs> yep. Uh, or if you want a long tea bag. Or <laughs> if you want a long teacup. Yeah. Because teacups come in many shapes and sizes and are as individual as the people who drink out of them. And the bags. And the bags, the tea bags, the yeah. nice, warm, wet tea bags. Okay. Okay. So now we have, we're going to draw some more guidelines. This is the edges. Yeah. Okay. Here and here of our teacup to help us find that. So draw down the... This is almost like in quarters. So in half again, actually draw a line down that side 
in half. So we're gonna mark our page into quarters lengthwise. Whoops, those aren't very good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so here and here, about a little ways down from your center dot, to draw two dots across from each other on those new quarter lines, and those are each side, the full width of our teacup. That's how big your teacup is. Yeah, and then just to help us draw a nice oval, I'm going to take um, and mark sort of the middle lower part of this shape here, so it almost looks like we've got dots making an eye shape, um, and that's the shape of our teacup. Teacup. And then now we're just going to join our dots. So we're gonna take go. I like to go left to right, and I gonna, apparently go right to left. An arc from one, and then an equal arc below. Oh, my teacup. Oh, I went nowhere near my dot. Oh, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm gonna make this. I, this should be more of an oval, I think. Yeah, make make the well, um, or you can just you know make a roundedness here. Yeah. Well, I can do both. There, I like it. Okay, I'm just gonna erase. I should throw my eraser away. Yeah. Okay, so now we've got the eye shape of the teacup and inside of our I make mine a little smaller. Yeah? <laughs> oh, it really looks like an eye. <laughs> We're going to draw the back edge of our tea uh, cup and also like where the height of our tea is. So how full is your tea cup, Sarah? Um, well, I think I've already drawn the back edge. Your tea cup is very full. Yeah. And then because tea cups have a thickness. Maybe we'll I'll make my tea cup a little fuller. A little thin line of the top of our small. eye and a thicker one on the bottom. There, I did that already. Eye. Okay, and then, oh wow, <laughs> that's so I like. <laughs> and then, so now we're gonna kind of roughly mark where the bottom of our teacup Mine is. Mine looks not like yours. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna do a tapered teacup shape like this. So I'm just gonna go to these quarter lines we drew again, and in the middle of the uh, middle two, I'm just gonna mark that with a dot. And then coming from the, each edge, joining up to my teacup is very off. shallow. My teacup's not. I'm gonna make my teacup a little longer so I can make less table. <laughs> so lazy. There we go. Oh, nice, nice teacup shapes. And then we're just gonna make a little smile at the bottom. Oh. And Whoops. join them together. That's it. And then I like to have a little foot on my teacup, so I make a little kind of bulge on it here. Just a little one. <laughs> my teacup was made in a homemade pottery studio. Not the studio is not homemade. <laughs> but somebody <laughs> made this teacup for their friend. It's it's someone's first or third try on the wheel. Yeah. Yeah. Now we're going to make the handle nice of them to give us a teacup. Here. And yeah. I start with that. We're going to start with this um, inner shape here, like an ear. It's like a capital D yes. almost. And teacup mugs, the ears come in different shapes and the handles come in different shapes, like mine and Sarah's. <laughs> and then we're just going to come and do the same thing on the outside. And I like to give my handles something a little fancy, so I give them a little loop loop there. And then if you want to have a little thickness, so just make a little, just to give an indication that there is mass to your handle. And that is... My handle is hefty. Oh, you know what? I think our mugs have to be lower. My mug doesn't have to be lower. <laughs> Mine does. Or an easy fix is to just move the table. The table. <laughs> that and seems just... easier than redrawing your teacup. Yeah. That's what I'm I think do. you can use an eraser for cleanup Oops. like that. That's not very straight. There you go. I'm just going to 
the race the extra lives. Yeah, as long as we're not racing like crazy. I can use the eraser. I don't want to get confused yeah. which lines I am following. Okay. I mean, and people at home are allowed to do whatever they want. They can erase it all or not erase any. There. So if you don't want to have to move your table up, you can also extend your teacup down. To a tea mug. To a tea mug. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to do the saucer. Whatever you think best will receive the tea bag. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the saucer is another, um, like an eye, but this time it has a teacup sitting in the middle of it. So you kind of go about here, midway, but space between the bottom of your mug and to your edge of your table, kind of halfway, a dot on either side. And we're just going to draw an oval around it. I see you did it in two parts, but I'm feeling brave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then we're going to give our uh, a kind of the cup shape around the edge of our teacup. Yeah, it's not a teacup, tea plate, tea saucer to saucer. We're just going to do a line that kind of goes like that and that and then continues around the other side of our teacup. The nice thing is painting can be fun even if you're not good at it. That's right. It's just for you. It is. I really enjoy it. Even though I'm terrible. You're not terrible. <laughs> We're going to no. do our, our, we don't use words like that. No, I'm because not terrible. You just have a different way of uh, expressing how you visually experience <laughs> the world. <laughs> do you think this is how I see teacups? <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's not. Okay, then we're gonna draw our tea bag now. So the like your middle line it is the line of your tea bag string. And then we kind of how big do you want your tea bag to be? That depends on how strong you like your tea. <laughs> <laughs> or your D. But we're just gonna make a rectangle. Shape. We'll never tell. Because we're not spilling the tea. <laughs> make a rectangle shape. That's a nice, it's almost a square. I'm going to actually make it a little longer because I want a stronger bag of tea. There we go. My tea bag was in someone's pocket. So it's a little wrinkly. Or it's old, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> it's just saying an old, old bag. bag that was in someone's pocket. Oh, it's too square. Well, it's, no, it's okay. I'm just gonna, and then if you want to add a little perspective, you can just draw a little diagonal line there, just so we have a nice full tea bag. And then I kind of usually imagine the tea bags being a bit triangular at the top, like like that. So. That's it. We're ready to get painting. Excellent. Time to paint our background. Whoop, whoop. These are the colors I am using. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of background about us. We each had some edibles before we started our painting. And we hope you joined us. Or if you don't want to, we hope you didn't. Um, <laughs> this is our first high art painting lesson we'll get better yep um trina has had about four milligrams uh-huh or six four they come in twos hers four i think i've had 14. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay um, but if you're like drinking some wine or like just want someone to giggle along with while we paint we're your gals We'll try to giggle and paint. Yes. Yeah. That's a word game. Don't have to be. <laughs> sounds too much like taint. We don't have to feel stoned alone. But now. We're not alone. Now we're going to paint the background. But first I would like to tell you about the colors I'm using. <laughs> <laughs> then I will spontaneously come by. <laughs> I'm using a very basic uh, Liquitex, actually they call it basics acrylic. 
It's, uh, I've got the titanium white here and Mars black, but you can also use craft paints from your local discount store. I often mm -hmm. do. In fact, this book is from the Dollarama, so you don't have to have fancy stuff. We're using takeout container lids yep. for our palettes, so you don't have to spend a lot of money um, to find out if you're me or Trina. You can just go to your local corner craft store, or you yeah. can get... Well, the main difference is they both work great. Um, the main difference is um, these type of like um, uh, paints tend to be thicker in text, uh, like thicker in texture. Yeah, these ones sometimes just have to do an extra coat. Yeah, these ones tend to also like have more yeah. pigment in them. So but they're... whatever makes you happy. Yeah, you could your... use crayons if you want to. Or pencil crayons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or watercolor. Get a sore wrist <clears throat> from all the... Yeah. But so I'm just going to go through the basic colors I'm using. I tried to use a pretty basic palette. So it's colors anyone can find. So we've got white, black. Unless you're colorblind. <laughs> primary red, primary blue. Um, this is called Thalo Cyanine Green. Um, but it's almost kind of uh, like an emerald green. Uh, primary yellow. And I'm using a pre-mixed prism violet color from Liquitex Basics because... Uh, I think it's really pretty. I will be using Hooker's Green. Yeah. I was saying. Well, that's appropriate for a tea bag painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, if you don't have purple, you can make your own purple by mixing red and blue together. Uh, and then these are the brushes I'm using. I don't really know how to describe what they are. This one's a... Um, I it's like a it. Big flat. It's a big flat roundy, or it's kind of shaped <laughs> I mean, like a rabbit's foot. It's a big flat roundy, flatty rabbit's foot. Mine's just flat, flat. Big, big roundy, big flatty roundy. <laughs> this one is, um, yeah, it is round in a cylindrical sense. It's like a medium round. Medium round. It comes to a little point. Um, and then I have this short skinny one and then I have this really cool long liner brush, but you know what? Just use whatever brush works for you and, um, it's all going to turn out well, but, uh, what I would recommend for the background, we're going to start blocking in some color. You do want to use one of your larger brushes because we're not working with any detail. And so we want to get the paint onto the canvas quickly or the paper. Yeah, you don't, you can use any size. And yeah. again, the canvases at the dollar store are fantastic. Um, our, I mean, we're using our papers roughly eight by 12 inches. Okay. So we're painting the background. Yeah, we're going to start the background with the, um, I'm using purple. But what other colors that would look nice, I think, like you could do a really bright green or a bright red too would look quite pretty. Whatever color you want your wall to be. Yeah. I always, I like purple. You do like purple. It's a color I like My a lot. phone case is purple and I often think of you when I see it. Yeah? Because uh -huh. I know you like purple. Oh, look how, I have my paint's a bit thin there because there's water on my brush. Let's put a little bit more on here and um you don't want actually like flat color here um i really like the texture that i have on the sample painting and so like an old wall yeah like an old plaster wall because who knows maybe it's your nana dipping this tv <laughs> <laughs> or your grandpa <laughs> I need some more paint. And if you want to try to, um, you can also kind of put a little a tiny bit of black in, and mix that together and just kind of make a darker color for out at the corners. If you want to add a little drama switch hands. to your painting. And then as we work our way in, just kind of becomes one with the right other paint and gets a little lighter. Oh, this is hard. 
Oh, it's not hard. You Sorry. can do it. I know I can. I just meant... We're painting because it feels good to our brains. You know what? It makes me really happy. And ironically, while I would say I'm not on a screen, obviously I'm on a screen because when I do them, I only do um step-by-step -step tutorials because i need the help and the guidance um and i'd like to think i'm not on a screen because even though i'm technically i guess on a screen yeah i'm not like not staring at not it you're actually looking at your paper doom scrolling more. and i'm not like i'm sort of like letting go of the day and stuff and just focusing on something completely different yeah i always feel really even calm. though I'm, yeah so you don't have to, and I should apologize for people that I switch hands often. <laughs> when, you're just, when you're not the world's greatest artist, you just do what feels comfortable. Maybe there's like other ambidextrous artists. I'm sure there are. I just feel like with this hand, I have more control. Does that make sense? Well, I'm not ambidextrous. Um, so um, as I get closer in on to my um, teacup and tea bag, I'm actually using more the tip of the brush rather than sort of the broad side, just so I have a little bit more control over um, where the color is going down. Just kind of feather the line out. My tea bag is very square. I like it. Yeah, you like it short and stubby? <laughs> <laughs> or square? I like a little more length than mine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Tea bags of all sorts. It's okay if the edges are a bit rough too, because we'll go over. I think it's it's time. Tidy those Whoops. up. Whoops, I want. put the wrong color on my brush. Uh-oh. And because it's not a real teacup. So it's okay if it doesn't look exactly like a real teacup, right? You can switch to a smaller brush if you need it as well. So because I use the craft paints, I'm just like in some spots having to go over it again. But that's okay. Because I'm not as detail-oriented as Trina, I have time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey Trina. Yeah. Knock knock. Who's there? You're a Europe. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Europe who? <laughs> Europe who? <laughs> no, Europe who? Oh. Okay, do the joke properly. Knock knock. Who's there? Europe. Europe who? No, Europe who? <laughs> I wonder how everyone's backgrounds are looking. I can't, I hope people will paint with us and then share their paintings. That would be amazing to see. And let us know so we can see how what much, people did. Yeah, how much people enjoyed. Or were horrified. Painting. Smash, smash, smash. I feel good about my background. Yeah, me too. I know I just want to make it a tiny bit darker. Because we can't make it perfect anyway. We don't know what it'll look like. And you know what's nice, what? Trina? These edibles certainly help take away the need for the need for be perfect. perfect. Yes. That's how they work for me. Mine's very dark, but I think it'll dry lighter. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I like... Um, the darkness? I li no, I like... <laughs> I like taking an edible and just getting to unwind a little bit <laughs> and giggle and have snacks. Yeah, me too. Um, and yeah, not have to be anything fancy. I actually don't like to paint in normal life, but one of my favorite hobbies is to have a snack a <laughs> of the adult sort and paint. I enjoy doing that with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's rinse the clean off our brushes. 
Uh, now we're gonna do the tabletop. Um, I'm gonna take the blue and mix it with a tiny, tiny bit of green. Mix that together. Mix, 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 mix. Uh, put a bit of yellow in. It's a bluey green. But still more blue than green. And then we're just going to... I accidentally it. used almost my whole palette with the purple. <laughs> I really spread it out. <laughs> so we're just going to paint this color onto our tablecloth. And I noticed the sample one has a bit of white in it. So I'm going to add a bit of white to mine too. Oh. I'm just mixing mine all in one pile. Yeah? Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Live and learn. And just kind of add more color. It doesn't matter if it's oh. exactly the same. I'm way behind. I have a little plastic knife thing that I like to use to mix because I'm not good at mixing with my brush. It's called a palette knife. Yeah. I know that's not what it's used for. Yes, that is what it's used for. You can use them for that or for... Trina, how can I make mine brighter? Use a lighter green? Yeah. Uh, add some yellow. Not green? Yeah, add yellow. It can be any color people want. Yes. Whoops. <laughs> Okay. No, don't keep going yet. What? I'm not done my background yet. I'm not done my tabletop. I should have just put all the yellow and the green. I'm taking it all. <laughs> <laughs> this is a... Oh, I like what's coming out. So you're having a green tabletop? Yeah, apparently. Yeah, I am. Okay. Oops. Maybe with a bit of blue. Mine's and green and blue. Mine's going to be like green and yellow. And it looks like some of the purple got in there. Yeah. So I'm purple. Wow. Okay. It's a very textured table. It's older than the wall plaster. Is it? If you can believe it. Have many people painted it? It's not a tablecloth. Yeah, it's a painted table. The tradition in the families in this photo is to re have the table repainted every seventh grandson. Wow, so not very often then. No, that's why it looks like crap. <laughs> They're just out of pack practice from painting? Well, they're not really table painting kind of folk. Not really table people. No, and so. Need a bit more blue. If you want to um, add a little bit more detail, we can uh, make the back of the table a bit darker than the front. Oh, my front's. But if you're be if you're behind a bit, you, you can, can pause. Pause or just skip this part. It's very optional. Whoops! <sighs> I switched to my fast hand. Look, what a difference! Whoops. <laughs> a lot of paint on my brush. 
just gonna put a little shadowy area. Mine kind of came out all the same color, even though I tried for it to not. <laughs> yeah, it did. I don't know how that happened. Must be that last grandchild. Well, imagine, like, you probably didn't even know the sixth, whoops, the sixth grandchild. Like, how does, how do you know you're the seventh? Especially, like, if, like, someone moves to France. Why would they move, just move to France? Well, because they had a job opportunity. And so then you don't really know, like, maybe your sister or your cousin had um, children you don't know about. And so how do you for sure know you're the seventh? I don't know. And do you are you like the, the princess? Do you spend all your life being groomed <laughs> to paint that table? Like is that? Oh, I thought the grandparents painted it. No, the seventh grand grandchild. I thought, or the seventh grandson. Yeah, grandson. But that could come fast, or that could take a while, depending on the family and their proclivities. <laughs> proclivities in for okay I like my table oh yep should I give it a bit of shadow how do I do that with some black yeah a tiny bit of black <laughs> don't just like knock your and then just um around the bottom of the <laughs> bottom of the saucer I had to grab a little bit of water there. I went, yeah. I don't know if I like that, but that's okay. Okay, so we're going to do the... Yeah, I do like it. I like it. Yeah. It's very green. Yeah. We're going to make a darker color for the front area of the table just by taking um, the color we we're using for the top. Oops, I went for the white. I meant to go for just a, like a little bit of black at a time. <sighs> You went for black, white instead of black? So blue and black. Should mixed I clean together. my brush? No, you can use, it's the same color basically. Um, Just with more blue. Yeah. Well, in your case, green. Oh. But uh, we want to have a darker sort of color. Okay. You can add a bit of green to it if you want to. But I mean, for all we know, people are doing like a gingham. Yeah. Well, if you're doing a gingham, or... you want to make it uh, still a darker version Oops. of the gingham. Oh, it should be darker, not lighter? Darker. Yeah, oh. it's a Oops. shadow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and go slow with the black, Sarah. Or don't. And then just add more of the green. Well, we, we want to have enough tone left, if you see on this one. There's like where the sort of drapery and the fabric is. Yeah. You need to have, be able to see those bits that we put in. So you don't want this to be super dark. So if I made mine too dark? Nope. You could even make it a little, a little darker if you want to. I moved my book up a little so I don't paint our table. Yeah, I had to do the same thing. Um, what flavor of edible did you have tonight, Trina? Um, I think one was cherry. Yeah. And the other was some kind of weird green colored one. That you, might have been kind of like lime. Do you know any good facts? Um, I like that I did much less of the front of the table and more of the table. Yeah? Yeah. And um, that's that's our background. We should let it dry. We're gonna take a snack break and let this dry so that it doesn't muck up our yeah. teeth. I'm cleaning my brush. And then we'll be back. Snack time. Snacks. Welcome back from your snack. We're just finishing ours up. We had chips and dip. That's the dip in a bowl that I made. Yeah. Now we're going to work on some more of our painting. On the teacup. On the teacup. I'm taking my uh, 
roundy pointy cylindery brownie medium roundy. round brush medium roundy dipping it in the water to get it wet and we're just going to take our white and put a pretty good coat of it onto our our teacup are we doing our saucer too well we'll just do the teacup for now because okay. we're going to kind of blend in some stuff into this white um and we don't want to have things drying out so we keep us from okay. doing that blending so you want to work somewhat quickly just so that the paint still is wet when we get to the next part. Well, I wish someone had told me that when I took a bit of a shortcut and got ahead during the <laughs> snack break. That seems like it would have been good information. <laughs> I'm just doing the body. Oh, are we doing the side, the handle? Um, you can, oh, as I if did. you were ahead. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> I'm make, making my handle a little wider. That's okay. Yeah. It's for very thin-fingered folks, my teacup. Very dainty people. Okay. I accidentally got a little green in my paint. That'll be all right. You've got a minty yeah. teacup. So. It's a bit of a bulgy teacup too in places. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is while we still have uh, the thick white on our mug, our teacup, we're just going to get like a tiny dot of black on our brush like that. Just kind of blend them together a little bit on the palette and then we're going to take that and just kind of go close to the edge just a bit like that. I find it really hard to get just a little bit of black. I know you do. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of brush down and as we move into the white area it kind of whoops finds much darker. Fades a bit. Because I struggle to get just a little bit of black. <laughs> Just give our teacup a little bit of dimension. So we'll just kind of blend that gray into the middle. Let's see how it gets lighter automatically, just like Bob Ross. Mm -hmm. Whoops. And if you feel like you put a little too much gray in one area, just go grab some white and stick it on there. easy to fix. I like that it just gives the teacup a little bit of like texture. Yeah. Because all my teacups are textured. <laughs> there. That's uh, the main part of our teacup. So when you've done that, you can go ahead and we'll do the um, handle next. So we're going to do kind of a bit of the same technique on the handle to give it some shape as well. <laughs> I stole my catchphrase. I did. I just wipe it there. It's a dry finger. I'm gonna thin my paint out a little bit here. It's very thick Make paint. It flow better. I'm gonna get it off my brush by wiping it on the saucer. I think I like what I've done. My teapot bulges out a little bit. Your teacup? Teacup. Well, don't worry about that because when we put the black lines on at the end, if you decide to do that, then it kind of covers up any of that stuff. Oh, I tried to fix it and I think I made it worse, which is why we shouldn't worry about fixing stuff, I guess. No. Because I made it worse. 
So if you right. want to give your, your handle a little bit of a reshape here, this is a good time to do it. I'll give mine oh, a little bit idea. of a cute uh -huh. bulgy there. Yeah. And a little other thing there. I gave mine a hump in case the thin fingered or thick thumbed. <laughs> so then we're going to do the same thing again. So take a tiny little dot of black onto your dirty white brush. Yeah. And then just kind of blend it off to the side to make a light gray color. I'm going to add a little more. And we're just going to go to the parts of our handle that would be in shadow. So kind of that inside loop that we've made to show the thickness of our, whoops. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a little bit of a deeper shadow here underneath where the handle joins the mug. And a little bit of shadow on the bottom of my handle here. <laughs> so now I'm gonna I'm gonna need a Skittle. <clears throat> That's an appropriate candy for doing art because you're eating the rainbow. Yeah. So we're gonna do kind of the same technique for our saucer. Saucy saucer. Actually, before we do that, we'll just um, do the lip, the inside lip of our mug. Um, if you're making a white mug like we are, just get more white on your brush and we're just gonna paint that inside oh, whoop. here. <laughs> My paint bottle sprayed white on me. Oh no. You need to go wash it? No, it was dry. Oh, it was dry. It sprayed dry paint? Yeah, like it sort of like came from the lid, like the crusty skin. It spewed on you? Yeah. Like a wet tea bag? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to paint the uh, saucer. If you want a white saucer, this is we are trying. We're just going to lay down our color in our main saucer area. It'd be fun to have like a pink saucer, like be like an extravagant lady who takes. Well, you have a pink saucer. Tea bags. Who takes tea bags <laughs> and puts them in her teacup? She puts them on her face. Well, Why don't that's... you make a pink uh, saucer? I think I'm gonna make like a mauve. So I'm gonna take some of my purple. Yeah. And I'm gonna put some white in it. Okay. Or I'm gonna take my white and put some purple a in it. A tiny bit to start with. Okay. Whoops. Uh oh. <laughs> well, that's pretty. I have no regrets about what I've done. What do you think? It's, it is pretty. Well, my um, background is quite dark. Yeah. You need to lighten up a bit. <laughs> I feel like we need some music in here. Yeah, but you know what? It's nice to just focus and paint too. Uh, I'm gonna do the same as I did above. We with can the add gray. music uh, to the YouTube video so people think we had it. Oh, nice. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little gray here under the some shadow under the bottom of the. I think I overpainted here. my saucer, and I'm okay with it. Bees make milk. I don't know, Sarah. What kind of bees do make milk? 
Uh, I guess my problem with this joke is that you know it. I do know it. And so while well, I want to share it with the world, your knowledge of it <laughs> ruins the punchline. So. Boobies. <laughs> I tried to time it to still get a laugh. I like the color of my saucer. Well, you know, the next color you get to do, you get to decide what color of tea you're drinking. I am going to drink brown tea. I'm going to have hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea is kind of a really bright pink color. What does it taste like? It's kind of really sour, it's tart. I've only ever had tea with milk and sugar. You can, if you put milk and in iced tea, I don't tea, like it iced tea. Good. Well, I know, so that's why I wouldn't drink it. So here I use, I mixed uh, pink and red to make the pink of the tea, um, but the white makes the color really opaque. So I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to actually see how I like it with um, a watery red, so a lot of the paper background shows through and there's still a tiny bit of white on my brush so. and if for some reason i'm your example <laughs> i'm using um raw sienna sarah's going to use raw sienna if you don't have any brown it's super easy to make you mix green and red together and that will give you brown and this one has a little bit of yellow in it right yeah i'm gonna add some very white yellowy to can brown. i lighten it with a bit of white yeah, or you can try what I'm trying, which is a thinner paint that lets the uh, should let uh, the white of the paper paper show through. So oh. you get because you know how tea, if you're not having milk in it, is kind of clear. Yeah. Um. So this. Kind yeah, of, maybe it's not fully steeped. Maybe the tea bag is going in needs and out to come down again. Yeah, it's going in and out of the cup of tea. That tea bag is just an up and downer. Yeah. Whoops. When do you drink like hibiscus tea? Um, I don't really like hibiscus tea to drink. I just like how the color is. Oh. When did you drink it to try it? Well, we did someone it give home. it to you? I think I was using it um, in a shoot and we had some in the studio and so I gave it a try. Yeah, but Lucas likes to drink it. I mean, people I know like to drink it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I really like how that effect I got with the watered down paint. I think that's really pretty and bright. Your tea looks very milky. Yeah, it is. It's one of those tea bags with milk infused. So you get a little bit of white stuff along with the dip. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very wavy in my teacup. <laughs> yeah, you're drinking tea on a boat. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you look at the structure of the cup, it makes sense that the tea might not settle um, very smoothly. <laughs> hey, so we need to let the tea cup dry a bit. So we're gonna put a base color down for our tea bag. If mine was your color, it would look like a vagina <laughs> with the tea bag going in. Your tea bag should be long and rectangular. It's a good thing it's not pink. Anyway, sorry, we're gonna do our <laughs> Does tea bag. Does mine look like a vagina? No, but I said if yours was the shape of mine, I don't. Mine's more bulbous, like I assume a vagina would be. I mean, I know what a vagina looks like, but I just mean like. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm gonna take my burnt sienna and just put a little blob of it. Can I just take a match to my raw sienna? Can I just put black in it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, black and maybe a little red. red. Yeah. For our tea bag. Yeah. Well, the tea bag's not going to be the brown here. 
Oh, it's actually, um, we're gonna take a tiny bit of brown, a tiny bit of yellow, and some white. And then we're just gonna make like a beige tea bag color here. Maybe more than a tiny bit of white. So just white and burnt sienna? I, I put some yellow in mine. Just a tiny bit of yellow. It doesn't have to be exact. Your bag can be any color you want it to be. Yeah. But uh, I, I like this kind of... I, I, mine is an unbleached tea bag. <laughs> oh, I got some green in mine. No, that's <laughs> not healthy. There's green in all my... I've gotten green in every portion of my... Well, because my palette is really dominated by... <laughs> green and purple. Yeah. I brought... Oh, no. I was going to say we got almost the same color. We didn't. Well, I'm as, well I, I mean, I started with a different color. Yeah, well, brown. No, we use the same brown. We but, did? <laughs> okay, that they're different. They're different teas. That's right. Yours has milk in it, in the tea bag. I wonder or if... not really milk, more of a milky substance. Yeah, like milk powder. So tea leaves mixed with milk powder. That's delicious. Yeah, it's what, what you'd probably get somewhere where they don't drink tea. Oftentimes in this southern U.S., they get confused when you ask for hot tea. You have to ask for hot tea. Because if you ask for tea, they'll bring you iced tea. That is so weird Unsweetened to me. iced tea. And one time at a McDonald's. So if you want someone, iced the one tea? girl was like, I don't think we sell hot tea. And she had to have the manager teach her. And in one place, they took the styrofoam cup and put it in the microwave to heat the water. And then oh. gave us the gross tea bag and the styrofoam cup with hot water. And we were like, no thanks. You have to ask for hot tea. What if you ask for iced tea? Is that, is that sweetened? Unless you say sweetened, it comes unsweetened. Ugh. I don't take well, they sugar in my hot like tea, make, but I like sweetened. But they like make their sweet tea like there. Like a lot of them have like big containers. Oh, okay. with like That's different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna actually. I don't know. I was just saying, I don't know how we got to talking about tea, and then I remembered what we're painting. Yeah, it's tea. Okay, so now the teacup stuff should be kind of dry. So we're going to. Oh, actually, with your tea color, your tea bag color, if you have enough of that, you can do your string for your tea bag with it too. So you wanna, um, might need to, depending on your paint, thin it with a little bit of water so it flows off the brush to make a fine line. Oh, I got green in that too. I mean, yeah, because otherwise the risk is having a very bulbous string. Yeah, a thick string on the tea bag. Not always desirable. No. I went a little darker. Because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> ah, nicely done. Thanks. Oops. Okay, so now we're going to um, put a cherry colored rim around the edge of our teacup. What well, kind of cheery rim? <laughs> um, it's going to go on the lips and rims. And um, I like I like a colorful um, accent color on my lips and rims. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go with a yellowy orange. You know what? I'm gonna do the same. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna uh, make orange just by mixing my yellow. Is vermilion red or orange? Vermilion. Oh, that one looks kind of orangey red. But uh, you can just take red and yellow and mix them together and get the whatever kind of orange you want. That's a lot. I want mine to be more yellow, so I'm going to add more 
yellow to it. I'm just gonna put it orange in. Whoops. <laughs> because I wanted a little creamy, I'm gonna put some white. There we go, that's a nice, very pretty orange. Uh, how's your orange coming on? Oh, you. Gonna... You had one that was already mixed. Mm hmm. Nice. Got too much paint on But I actually got a bit of green in there. No. <laughs> I did. I'm just going to wash a bit of the paint off my brush. If the brush is a little wetter, then the paint will flow off it a bit better. We don't want the paint too thick for this part. We want it to flow off the brush nicely. Oh, there's a lot of green. That's okay. It gives it like that diarrhea. <laughs> Baby diarrhea, obviously, to give you a green adult diarrhea. You got problems? I think so. I don't think I've ever had green diarrhea. Oh, well, I've had kind of green poo. You, we shouldn't discuss this. <laughs> I ate a lot of kale. So what am I doing? Um, well, we're going to do kind of the edges of the, um, and the foot and rim of the tea saucer cup. and teacup. So I'm going to start with the... I'm going to start at the top and work my way down so I don't drag my hand through wet paint. I think... that I like my color? Nice. It looks a lot like my tea. If you want to try to get all the paint on the end of your brush, if you kind of twirl the paint through it, it brings the paint and the brush to a nice tip for yeah because if you use just the tip yeah you want to uh, just put the tip in nice so people can leave comments and let us know what they think and if they painted with us they can yeah, we'd love to hear. Find us on social media and share with their paintings. Um, and you can tell us what you think we should paint with, but just know that I can't paint, so it can't be anything super complex. I mean, I can paint, but like, I couldn't do a car or anything. So, like, simple things. Because we want everyone to feel like they can paint so we're setting ourselves up for success um sounds um where what's our our, our instagram it's one high dot art one is in the number not spelled yeah i should probably tag hashtag high art yep and then you could share and then we'll reshare people's art and if you, like there's snacks you recommend yes and nothing or, with pickles yeah or well we don't have to eat it <laughs> just because they recommend it doesn't mean we have to eat it if someone <laughs> recommends it we go that doesn't seem to our taste we can say hey thanks diane <laughs> that's just not like we don't have to eat <laughs> Nothing with pickles. Sorry, pickle lovers. Whoops. <laughs> I'm so glad I'm using a homemade mug for my tea. Whoops, Sarah. <laughs> I like how my original painting there's some like wasn't all the same orange. It's some streaky yellow in it. So I'm trying to. 
recreate a bit of that because I thought it was pretty. Whoops. The nice thing too is like, ours are very different. But my orange, now that I've stopped adding white to it, is very bright. Yeah. Whoops. So bright it leaps off the saucer. What's nice about acrylic paint is that you can kind of experiment with it really easily. It's very forgiving. I'm very forgiving. The edible I had allowed me to be extra forgiving. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit of my accent color on the handle to you because I like that. I'm adding a little bit of yellow to soften my orange a touch. It felt very jarring. Yeah? Yeah. It does like look it. almost fluorescent, but it uh, looks great with that purple and green. Uh, well, that's good because I just noticed there's a little bit of green in my orange. <laughs> so we're almost done. We're uh, going to do our tea bag next. Um. I want to take some pink in my for my tea bag and just kind of poke it on like that. So it look try to give it a bit of a tea texture. Now because my tea is milky tea, uh -huh. I shouldn't use pink. Should I use a darker brown? Yeah, I, w I would think about what color of leaves that you think you would need to make your tea. Some black and some brown. Like a blend. Yeah. I may just mix a bit of brown and red and pink together on my brush to give some different tones to my tea bag. But I would just use your imagination. Gonna get How many people purple. really like examine their tea bags? You know, I've I've looked at my tea and thought it was really pretty. Yeah, yeah, I have. There's some pretty stuff in it. There are some beautiful teas, and there are some teas that change colors. Yeah, and there's some that open up into flowers. Just gonna put a bit of purple in there. I saw some pink on my brush, like mixing up the colors a little bit here and there. Can you poke them in? Like that. I, want a nice I think I got a little bit of green in my black. <laughs> well, it's your favorite color. It is my favorite color, so it's somewhat ironic. Whoops, and now it's coming off of the, that's a drip. Oh, I like how those colors are coming together. A little. I got a little intense just poking one spot a bunch. Yeah? Yeah, so I had to fix it. Not fix it, fix it, but like fix it. Well, the more you poke it, the more the colors will blend together. I know, and I, I didn't know if I should, they should blend together. No, no, we want some nice color variation in yeah, here. Yeah, so that's why I like tried to fix where I went a little intense. Yeah. 
just kind of makes it look like there's a lot of yummy little things in your tea. Yeah. Oh, I guess I should put the milk in. <laughs> It's like a uh, uh, camo tea. You're having army tea. Yeah, just a little bit of milk. Now, you know, if you want to, we're going to do the tea cup next. Okay. The, the little designs, but my tea cup is a bit wet. So we're going to pop. Okay, your tea cup's wet? Now we're going to add some decorations to our tea cup. This is where you can be really creative. Um, I'm using my, for the flowers that I'm gonna do, I'm using my medium round brush. And uh, I wanna create some red flowers. I wanna see what it looks like with a tiny bit of blue in there. Oh yeah. It's not mixed evenly on my a tiny bit of orange and my brush here. Just gonna get some colors together. My brush is really loaded and uh, I'm low on space on two palettes. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna like put some flowers on my teacup, just like pressing this and pulling back a little bit. With my brush, I can make some really pretty flower petals. Oops, I got some green in my red too. Oh. That green has made its way over onto a different palette. It was meant to be. I'm going to put three flowers on mine. How many are you going to put on? We'll see. I'm not going to decide until I get to the last flower. Probably three. You know what I like about the teacups is you could like really go crazy with the decoration if you wanted to. Yeah, you could make a really fancy teacup. Or you can keep it simple. This is a pretty quick way to make flower petals. Or you could even have another edible tomorrow. Ooh, that looks more like a star than a flower. Well, it could, stars would be a very nice decorative motif. Yeah. Oh, well, it looks like that now. Uh, so I'm going to need a bit more of my green. This is a handmade teacup after all. I'm just going to use straight. So, that flower is really struggling. I like it. So for this part, uh, use the thinnest brush you have. I really like the liner brush I'm using here. It's got really long bristles and uh, you can make, if you want to, a very expressive line with it with some practice. Oh. What uh, you want to have this successful with though is you want to make sure that your paint flows off your brush easily. So it's pretty thin. Um, thin it out with a fair bit of water and uh, Twirl your brush through the paint to get it all nicely on the tip. You can get a feel for it. And then we're going to give some stems to our flowers. Like caps and stems. Yeah. Caps, like mushrooms, but flowers. So I'm going to start with more pressure on the brush. And then as I pull it back, I lift the brush up so that it tapers the line. Then now uh, once you fill your brush up and then you can just making the leaves is pretty easy. It's again it's like making the petals but smaller. We just press and pull into the paper. Like that. Oh that looks nice, Sarah. Thanks, Trina.
this part. Yes. Easy to get lost in with concentrating. You could have so much detail and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take a bit of my green and give my flowers like. Oh, whoops! That one looks like a button. <laughs> oh, the choice has been made. Actually, I like that. That worked. Yep, good enough for me. There. I'm gonna add uh, some blue to the middle of my flowers, I think. Or, yeah, light blue. Oh, so we were putting color in our flowers. In the middle, yeah. Oh, I just did that. You just did it. You're a rebel. What are you doing? Adding some highlights? Yeah. Cute. If you get lots of paint on your brush and it flows really well, you can actually dip it into... My flowers are still wet, but as you can see, that blob of blue just kind of pushes everything inside. Yeah. So, and we're just going to um, use our liner brush, if you have one, or a small brush, and just make a complementary pattern on your saucer. So I'm going to make some leaves and maybe put some red dots so it's not the exact same pattern, but something that, or you can have a mismatched tea set, which is really cute too. Maybe uh, instead of leaves around it, I'll put polka dots. I'm going to make pink. Probably with a little bit of green. <laughs> Probably. Yep, there's green in there. Very consistent. That. I got some of the ones out of my saucer on my other hand. Because <laughs> I've been switching hands. I'm going to make mine green and light blue with polka dots. So I'm feeling frisky and playful tonight. Yeah, it shows. <laughs> You playful, frisky vixen, you. Not vixen. Scamp. Scamp. You know, I see that you're doing a lot of detail work, but I'm going to skip ahead to the last step. Okay. Do you, you, you know what the last step is? Do yeah. you want to say what it is? Yeah. I'm excited I get to teach a portion. Oh. That's not true. I'm going to take a little bit of white 
and just highlight my T. Oh, there's a lot of green in there. I need to stop what I was doing and just shake the table. Can <laughs> imagine if everything came down? Uh, just put a little brown on there. Put some highlights on your T. Yeah. I'm ready to put highlights on my tea. Get the green out. Uh, you want to thin your, I think you would want to thin your paint down a bit for this too. Yeah. Yeah. Try to keep the green out. Okay. Mine still has like a vagina look to it, but that's okay. I'm moving on to the next step, which is my favorite step of all. This is the, the last step of all is, um, I thought I got to say it. Oh, sorry. You say it. <laughs> I put my paintbrush in the black. Uh huh. I pick a spot on the. No, we, if you want to, you can put black outlines on everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> Sure I like to it. do that because it. I like the kind of comic book quality it gives it, and uh, it also cleans up some of the lines if you want to. But you know, if you don't have to do it, if you don't want to do it, you can just go straight to the last step, which is signing your name. Yeah. But uh, we're gonna just quickly. Go through and draw a few lines. Just it helps things stand out a bit more too. I'm gonna draw a line around my tea bag. Whoops. I'm using a brush that's too big. And then every time I use it, I'm like, that's too big. And yeah. then I just, well, I'm like, but there's paint on it. And then I just reload it. <laughs> <laughs> I like to put a little line there. You know, sometimes they staple the tea bags closed. Do you ever drink the staple? Does it ever fall out? It's never fallen out for me. Has it fallen out for you? No, now that I'm thinking of it, I can't like even picture what kind of staple it is. Like a fabric staple? Oh, it's just like a little... Like a tea bag stitch staple? Or is it like a... I think it's usually it's metal. Not a metal staple. Yeah. I don't... Oh, whoops. So, my paint is pretty thin for this. That's okay on purpose. Oh. <laughs> so that it flows off the brush and makes a smoother line. You could check on us and just be like, hey, do you mind if I like bang about? I think he's going to bed as long he as he's going to bed. We're going to bed soon too. I guess we have to do an outline. When you're done, your outline will stop. My outline's sloppy. Okay. Because I'm rushing now. Because I want to just eat snacks. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whoops, that's really thick. Yeah. The line on mine is ruining mine because I'm just like uh, don't bother with super it. Super high. <laughs> so I are you gonna do the part that you wanted to do? Yeah. You're gonna yeah. sign it. You know what? I like mine how it is. The final step. Pick your spot. Hold on, I'm almost done. Okay. Well, folks, 
Thanks for joining us for our first episode of High Art. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, I hope you liked it. I hope it was just kind of chill. I think that's what we're going for is chill. Yeah. Maybe we'll categorize them like high energy chill. So like you can match your high with the painting. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, I didn't do that. Yeah, putting the little loops in for my drapery on the table. And now I'm gonna sign my name. Do you think people ever will mistake that turtle painting for my painting? I think yours is a more rustic style. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you did good. Yeah. Good job, Trina. Thanks. Good job, um, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> um, feel free to like and subscribe our channel. We promise we're going to get better as we go. Not the painting, because I've been trying this for a while. But, you know, the... The, the, the talking. The, to the tempo. The tempo. Tempo. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Do 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 do.